and welcome to the Wet Works webinar series hosted by Workforce Windsor Essex. My name is Katie Reno, and I'm joined by my colleague Corey Schenken. This episode of the webinar series is called Wet Works Find and Keep Great Employees. We'll be focusing on one of our local employment planning council projects, a small business recruitment and retention guide. We're going to walk you through the different sections of this guide, and we'll show you how to use this guide as an employer who is looking to recruit and retain great talent in Windsor, Essex. During this webinar, please do not hesitate to ask questions by typing your question into the sidebar at the top right of your screen. We'll attempt to answer your questions throughout the duration of the webinar, or we'll answer them as soon as we have finished. You will also find downloadable content in the same toolbar. These downloads include some documents that we'll, we will be covering in today's webinar. Without further ado, Corey will get us started. Hello. <clears throat> At Workforce Windsor Essex, our plan is to man our mandate, excuse me, is to plan, facilitate, and advocate for regional workforce development defined as the development, retention, and recruitment of a wide range of skilled workers to meet the current and future economic and social development needs of Windsor Essex. The recruitment and retention for small business in Windsor Essex guide was developed to help small businesses think about how they are finding and retaining talent in Windsor Essex. Small businesses are those with less than 100 employees and make up the majority of the business landscape in Windsor Essex. While this guide is aimed at small businesses, most of the information still applies to medium and large sized businesses as well. Much of the information in this guide responds to recruitment and retention issues gathered from over 100 businesses during consultations carried out in the summers of 2016 and 2017. The guide also contains best practices for hiring and retention from these businesses. We will now run through the different sections of the guide in order to provide you with some recruitment and retention tips for finding and keeping great employees in Windsor, Essex. The first section of the report is dedicated to tips for recruitment for small businesses. One of the first questions we asked to employers during consultations was, how are you recruiting? This was an open-ended question, and we found employers used a mix of the following to recruit. Online job boards, networking, word of mouth, and referrals, their company website, social media, staffing agencies, recruiting directly from universities or colleges, Employment Ontario service providers, experiential learning, newspapers, and job fairs. These methods can all benefit your recruiting, so we'll go through and quickly highlight what the benefit of using each is. The most popular method for small businesses to recruit employees was online job boards, such as Indeed or Monster. Posting a job opportunity on one of these online boards is a simple way to quickly reach a wide audience. Also, this is the most popular way that job seekers will look for a job. The next most popular method for small businesses to recruit was using networking or word of mouth referrals. This is a popular method since people care about their reputation and they'll typically only refer people that they know will do well in the role and the workplace, which means great hiring potential for employers. Posting on your company website is beneficial since it means that a job seeker is surfing your website and therefore most likely already has an interest in your company. Social media makes it easier to reach a wide audience. Also, with targeted ads, you can narrow your audience to suit a particular position. A staffing agency may be able to hire employees when there is a large gap in employment and many employees need to be onboarded. This method will also save you from employing your own recruiter or using a large amount of your own resources to search for employees. Making connections with professors at post-secondary educational institutions may allow you to snap up the best talent as soon as it becomes available. Employment Ontario service providers allow employers to delegate part of the screening process while simultaneously widening the pool of talent they're searching for. Employers can find this resource in our research tool. I will now show you how to access this research from our website. So if you start on our homepage, www.workforcewindsoristics.com, and you go to the employer drop-down menu, the third option is research, so you're going to want to click on research. And for the sake of this demonstration, I will make up a fictional scenario that we are a business looking to hire. So the, all, the first option you would pick is I'm a business. You're then presented with a bunch of uh, different options. And for our sake, we are going to click human resources because hiring is under human resources on our research resource. Um, obviously, the next option we are going to pick is hiring. 
And let's say for the sake of our fictional case that we are looking to hire an unemployed person. So we're going to select that option next. You are then presented with uh, supports located in Windsor, Essex for hiring an unemployed person. So let's click on the Ontario Works Employer Incentives, for example. You'll see this is a program offered through the City of Windsor that provides funding to Windsor, Essex employers for pre-employment and on-the-job training, employment-related expenses, and job matching. So we provide the name of a contact that you can get in touch with to learn more about this program. And this is a great example of how WeSearch can help employers when they are looking to hire. Another great resource, sorry, resource that we have located on our website is our WeJobs. So under employers, if you're looking to hire, this time you are going to go under, under WeSearch and you're going to click on looking for hire, looking to hire. Once you have landed on this page, you will be presented with an option to sign up for our WeJobs. So this is sending us a link of your online job posting, career fair, or short-term training opportunity. And what we will do is WeSkills Database is a database where individuals in Windsor, Essex, who are looking for work, will send their resumes in. And what we will try to do is match up your job posting, career fair, or short-term training with one of these resumes to best find the best talent that that you were looking for talent in the Windsor Essex area um, and that is a great another great resource on our site if you just want to sign up for we jobs for employers when they are looking to hire So another way that you can recruit is through post-secondary placements such as co-ops, which allow you to give an employee a test run and figure out if their skills are suitable for the position that you need to fill. Then there's newspapers. People still read them. Eight in 10 Canadians still read newspapers. So this is actually an effective way to reach people in the community. Job fairs allow the candidates to come to you. You're able to meet candidates face-to-face -face, and this can allow for impromptu interviews on the spot. You can find our job fair guide for employers in the resources section of our website. So I will show you how to access our job fair guide from our website. So starting from the homepage, what you're going to want to do this time is search in our search bar, job fair guide for employers. So once you search that, the first result is going to be your job search, overcoming barriers for job seekers. And you are going to want to click on this because the job fair guide is an extension of this job search project that we did in the last year. So on the links at the top of the screen, you will see a link for job fair guide. And it's actually located on the same page, but clicking this link will just is a shortcut to bring you to the bottom of the page. So here you will be able to download our job fair guide for employers, which is actually available as one of our handouts today on the toolbar that you can download. And it's just a checklist of what employers should prepare for and be ready for in job fairs to make sure that they are attracting the right type of talent. Another example of a good resource on our website that will help employers find and hire and retain good talent in Windsor, Essex. So to end that section, if you're looking for quantity, businesses say look to online job boards. If you want quality, businesses say it's networking and word of mouth that are the best options. It's also helpful to have a good understanding of the different groups in our community you might not normally think to hire. So let's take a look at that. Uh, excuse me. Let's take a look at a few of these groups and explain the benefits of each. First, we have newcomers. 48% of newcomers surveyed who indicated they hired newcomers were impressed with their technical skills and work experience, while 48% mentioned their work ethic. Others mentioned that newcomers were culturally competent and their language skills often helped the business garner customers from a wider range of cultural communities. Another group is students who offer new perspectives, technology integration, and tend to be loyal. Students are our future workforce. Many school programs even have experiential learning opportunities built into their programs to allow students and employers a better chance at a working relationship. Students bring a new perspective and may have innovative approaches to solving problems. They may integrate technology into daily operations, or they may spend a dedicated amount of time to fix a problem. 
Recent graduates who are often similar to students are willing to put their knowledge into practice and are eager to put their skills to work. They are a group motivated to apply theories and textbook knowledge into real world practice. A fourth group is retirees who, many, who possess many years of experience, mentorship qualities and flexibility. Consider these values when training new hires or looking to develop a career progression plan. Retirees can be great mentors in the workplace. And last but not least, persons with disabilities, many of whom possess a post-secondary degree, are reliable, and possess a 72% higher retention rate than other types of employees. Adding a person with a disability to your, to your work will create diversity in the workplace and being aware of these different groups can help you widen your pool of candidates. We at Workforce at Windsor Essex strongly believe in experiential learning opportunities and the benefits they provide for both employers and employees. This is another great way to locate talent and perhaps give the individual a test run to see if they are suitable for a position in your company. As such, the next section in our Small Business Recruitment and Retention Guide asked employers if they were providing any experiential learning opportunities. Offering these opportunities allows businesses to have access to talent before others, be flexible, be more helpful at peak periods, offer a fresh outlook, and employers will now have a better understanding of what to expect from an employee in an experiential learning position. There are many different forms of experiential learning that employers can offer, such as apprenticeships, career presentations, high school co-op, internship placements, job shadowing, mentorships, post-secondary co-op, tours, and volunteer placements. Very importantly, experiential learning opportunities give small businesses the chance to get prospective employees inside their doors and working for them. In a climate where 70% of small businesses have trouble recruiting, experiential learning is a great solution. I did an internship with Workforce Windsor Essex through my master's program at school, and they hired me on. I would, I would definitely recommend participating or hosting an experiential learning opportunity. So um, we do have a guide on our website, which I will now show you how to access. So if you wanna go back to the homepage, and under employers, you are going to want to go to the experiential learning hub. This guide for employers is an um, just explains pretty much the benefits of hosting an experiential learning opportunity, how to host a participant, and facts like those. So if you're an employer and you don't know much about the benefits or how to host an experiential learning opportunity, this would be a great way to learn how. So in our experiential learning hub, we have an employer's guide for experiential learning. Uh, available for download and this is also available for download today in your toolbar at the upper right corner of your screen. Another great resource that is located on our website. So what about the job posting itself? This is one of the most important recruitment tools you possess. This is the chance for you to catch the eye of talent that you're searching for. Something to consider is how would you attract someone to your job? There's a short list of important questions that should be able to be answered by simply reading a job posting. These questions include, what would I be doing? What do I need to have to get hired? What should I have to get hired? How will I be compensated? When and how often will I be working? Will I get any perks? What will it be like to work here? Is there room to grow here? Start by developing a clear job description. Nobody wants ambiguity about a potential career. They want to know exactly what they're going to be doing. For example, a posting on Kijiji that reads, looking for desk, te desk technician with one to three years of experience gives no description of what people will be doing day to day and what specific skills they need to qualify for the job. It is also a great idea to make a clear distinction between assets and requirements. Does somebody necessarily need a master's degree to obtain the position or is it just an asset? This method will help you narrow your candidates who have all the necessities for the job, but may not have all the assets suggested. Provide answers to questions before even meeting a candidate for the position. This will help narrow down the candidates even before the potential interview process so that you know you're attracting somebody who wants the specific job. Describe the compensation, perks, and workplace culture. 
Is your office flexible with hours that can be worked? Do you offer benefits? People want to know this information before applying to jobs. This will avoid somebody leaving the interview process disappointed because they wanted more than you were able to compensate. Finally, post the job. Use any of the methods me mentioned earlier. They all have their specific benefits. Find the one that works best for you. Just make sure the application process isn't too tedious. This may turn away some job seekers who were once interested in the job. After an employer has posted a job posting and has received interest from their desired amount of candidates, the next step in the recruitment process is the interview. Our guide suggests a planned out approach to interviewing candidates. It's not only important to the business to be sure they are conducting a proper interview, but it shows the candidates that the business is serious about the specific hire if the interview process is planned out beforehand and goes smoothly and according to plan. So step one, to prepare your questions. For example, will you have open-ended questions or structured? Maybe a mixture of both. Will you question based on culture or with more of a focus on skills? Creating questions beforehand will allow you to gain a better understanding of the employee and the areas you wish to know the most. So step two, decide on a process. For example, are you going to interview over the phone, in person, or by video chat? How many stages will the interview have? This planning also allows for a cleaner interview process. For example, if you know your interviews will be held over two stages, you can potentially save some more detailed questions for a second round once you're more sure of the candidates that are still available and have weeded out the first round of interviewees. Step three, involve the team. It is always a good idea to give your team members a say. They may have a perspective you have not thought about before that could add value to the interview process, and they'll have to work with the new hire. Step four, get creative. For example, set up a small tour of your business during the interview or provide the interviewee with a day in the life of an employee at your business. This will allow the interviewee to have a deeper understanding of what goes on at your business and may allow for them to decide more accurately if they are a fit for your company. Techniques like these will allow employers to find the perfect fit. Step five, be timely and follow up. It's always a good idea to check in with your employees throughout the interview process. This could be very helpful in the fact that employers can gauge prospective employees along the interview process. Does the employee seem more excited after the interview? That's a good sign. It's also important to follow up with all candidates. They may suit another position in the future and you want them to have a positive view of your business. Planning the interview process ahead of time is important to ensure it goes smoothly and the candidate sees how professional the company they're applying to really is. A poor interview will not go over well with a candidate and they may change their mind as to whether or not they want to accept a job with your company. Now, after the interview process and after a new candidate has been chosen, the next step for the employer is the onboarding of the employee. It is common for a first day employee to be nervous or not feel entirely comfortable, so it is important for the employer to do as much as possible to ease the employee into their new position. One effective way to do so is include important details about their job in a contract. This contract should include their job description, duties, compensation, and legal details, such as non-compete, non-disclosure, termination clauses, etc. This way, employees will know what is expected of them right away without having to guess. Another effective way to ensure a new employee is settling in more comfortably on their first day is to provide them with an orientation. This could consist of a single or a combination of any of the following techniques, conversation, guide or videos, making introductions such as to coworkers, customers, and key contacts, pairing the new hire with a mentor, and or providing the new employee with a workstation and training. A great example of a local practice that helps new employees settle in on their first day is seen at Radix Incorporated. They provide their new employees with a box of cookies on their first day to encourage other employees to stop by, grab a cookie, and introduce themselves. It's also a great idea for small businesses to be constantly monitoring and referring to labor market information to strengthen their business. This would be the use of data such as industry trends, demographics, and labor supply slash demand. Labor market information is information about the jobs in any location. LMI, or labor market information, includes information about jobs that are available in certain locations or sectors, salaries, employers that are hiring or laying off, working conditions, what employers are looking for, specifically skills, 
job areas that will grow or shrink, unemployment rates, the education or training needed for certain jobs or sectors, information about the people who are working in a location or sector. Getting a better understanding of labor market characteristics of their community will allow businesses to more effectively target employee candidates, compensate their employees excuse me, according to community standards and keep their employees happy and be able to retain their talents. So we do have a case study on the screen right now, a fictional case study that would show how labor market would information would be very valuable to employers. So for example, Greg Greenhouses, located in Leamington, has 80 employees, including three IT staff. They generally have a good retention rate, but they often experience turnover with their IT staff and struggle to fill the positions when they post them again. They currently pay their network technician $18.50 per hour and pay their two business analysts $17 an hour and $21 an hour, one of which has two years experience and the other seven years of experience. Wondering whether wages affecting their retention rate and ability to hire for these positions, they contact Workforce Windsor-Essex and are provided with the following wage information for the Leamington area. Looking at this table, they determine they should be paying their network technician at least $20.44 per hour to be competitive in Leamington, if not more. Additionally, they decide to increase the wage of their less experienced business analyst to $25 an hour and to that of their more experienced analyst to $36 an hour. Furthermore, they create a plan to increase their IT staff's wages incrementally according to the percentile information in the future. This is an example of how small businesses can improve their employee relations simply by contacting Workforce Windsor Essex to make a quick inquiry. They were able to realize they were underpaying their employees and fix the issue as a result. Another example of how small businesses can use LMI to help themselves is learning about labor supply and industry trends. For example, do you know how many people are graduating from a program you pull candidates from? Is an occupation you're hiring for considered hard to fill? Is the industry's workforce projected to grow or shrink in the future? Do you need to hire someone with a post-secondary education? Answers to these, answers to, sorry, answers to questions like these will help you prepare to hire and retain employees more effectively from our available labor force. Data requests are available on our website if somebody wants to know specific LMI. So I will now show you how to request a data request from us through our website. So starting from the home page, this time you are going to want to go to the community option and under community option at the very bottom, we have LMI data request. Alternatively on, I think any page except for our home page, for example, if you go click on any link, there is a link to labor market a data request as well. And I will just put an arrow to that in case you can't see it. So using the method I mentioned before in community all the way to the bottom, LMI data request, both of those options will land you on this page. So what we ask from you is a first name, last name, job title, a single line of text and an email. So we also ask what type of labor market information you're requesting. So let's say you want to do something like the fictional Greg Greenhouses and you're looking for salary and wage data to see if you're compensating your employees enough. And then you can also um, filter your results level of detail. So we can, we can usually provide you answers by gender, by age, by municipality, by year or other. You want to tell us more about your requests, like what detailed information you'd like. You can enter it in this comment box in the bottom. These data requests will actually be sent directly to Katie or myself, and we usually have the results for you in a time frame of 48 hours or less. And that is just another uh, resource on our website that can help employees recruit and retain better talent in Windsor, Essex. Once an employee is recruited and has settled in as part of the team, it's important that small businesses are aware of methods in which to retain these employees and make sure they're content every day with issue, issues such as diversity of work, team environment, and working hour flexibility. It's important that an employer supports their team. They must ensure that their employees are given the right tools and environment to succeed. 
Some helpful tips would be providing them with a neat workspace, so have a regular cleaning schedule or service in place to ensure this. Providing a comfortable workplace, so ask your employees simple questions like if their chair is comfortable, if the lights are too bright, and things like that, and make the necessary adjustments. Consider if employees are able to focus on their work. So is the office too noisy or perhaps too hot or cold? This may lower productivity. Allowing feedback and input from all employees on a regular basis, and not just telling them what to do all the time and not listening to them when they do give you feedback. Um, you know, if you allow feedback, this will help with retention. Setting clear expectations and goals for your team to achieve so they're not confused as to what they're supposed to do. These are just some ways that can help you support your team to support your retention. Going above and beyond for your employees is also certainly something they will recognize and appreciate. Some ways you can offer perks to your employees are as follows. Options to telecommute to work, meetings or conferences, etc. at times. If they have an, let's say they have an appointment at the dentist in the morning and uh, and they want to work from home in the morning until their meeting is scheduled, you can let them do that if you trust them and it would be a great idea to boost morale. Um, flexible work hours, give employees options to work at 10 to six work day, some days instead of nine to five, for example. If you have the abilities, if you have the ability to let employees make their own schedules and you trust them doing this, you will reap the benefits. Performance bonuses. You should be giving employees rewards based on their good performance, such as yearly salaries for meeting exemplary sales numbers, for example. Free snacks in the workplace. This means less time for employees going on coffee and snack runs. Games in the workplace. This gives employees a chance to unwind on breaks and a relaxed dress code, which allows maybe employees not to have to worry about breaking the bank to buy a nice outfit for work. A great example of a local practice is seen at iDream Interactive. The team works a four day work week every other week by working an extra hour Monday to Thursday each week. Offering perks to your employees results in a 32% decrease in absenteeism and a 26% increase in productivity. Another extremely important factor in the retention of employees is creating and fostering a positive team environment. A 2014 Global Force study shows 62% of employees with one to five work friends said they would reject a job offer from another employer. Almost 50% of the same respondents said they loved their company and compared to only 24% with no workplace friends. Foster friendships and you'll foster retention. Some examples of this are as follows. Having a welcoming committee for new employees, setting up their workstation for them, or giving them welcome merchandise are all ways to get new employees into the team spirit. Bring in a meal, like a potluck, and enjoy eating together. Volunteer for opportunities as a team to help build a great community while building your team. Get out of the office for team events and hold staff meetings that include all staff. This ensures that everyone has a chance to participate and collaborate as a team. A local example of fostering a good team environment is at Brave Control Solutions, where the company gives $200 towards a social activity if over five people sign up to do it. Employers should also always be investing in their employees, just as their employees are constantly investing time for them. You should always be trying to grow and build the capabilities of your employees so that they are not feeling stuck in a dead-end position with no room to grow. Some examples of investing in your employees in your employees are as follows. Cross-training your employees. So preparing them for multiple roles and allowing a better understanding of the entire business. This is useful for filling in for unexpected or expected prolonged absences. Paying a living wage to your employees. This substantially decreases their financial and emotional stress. Providing benefits such as health benefits, paid time off, and retirement, etc. This will lead to less absenteeism in the office. Offer paid time off. Striking a healthy work and life balance is critical for employees' productivity levels, and this can also help from spreading a cough through the office. Succession planning, letting them know there is room for growth and continuous learning. Help your employees help you. You can offer workshops, online training, massive open online courses through platforms like edX or Udacity, 
tuition reimbursement, and conferences as ways to ensure your employees feel they are supported by your business to advance personally and professionally. Provide your employees with the tools for success. For example, do your employees need a uniform? Purchase your employees' uniforms so they can focus on the work at hand and not have to worry about buying the correct clothing for work. A good idea may also be to implement a workplace wellness program. You also want to ensure that your employees feel valued and included. It is important that employers hear and recognize their employees. Some examples of making sure you hear your employees are as follows. Let them pitch ideas. They're on the ground and they know the details. The best ideas could come and usually do come from your employees. Ensure your employees know what is expected of them. Consider sending weekly priority emails to employees or using a project management tool like Basecamp. So what Basecamp is, is a project, is a tool online where you can set deadlines for projects, certain deadlines and certain goals you're supposed to meet. And it sends a weekly email to the people assigned to those deadlines, telling them what they should be working on that week in order to meet the deadline. Survey your employees and making improvements based on the feedback. Rec Recognize your awesome employees. Use awards and rewards and praise these employees if they are doing an exemplary job. And forming an employee committee. Nip issues in the bud before they become bigger problems. A form of this practice is seen locally at Hawkins & Co. Accounting. Each Monday, the team holds an innovation meeting to brainstorm how to solve one problem, big or small. Team building is another activity that can help with employee retention. It is important to build social cohesion amongst your employees and enable employees to work better together. Some examples of team building opportunities and activities include Pottery and Palettes, which is located in Tecumseh, and will get your team together to express their creativity through a painting workshop, and everyone will get to take home a unique piece of art that they can display at home or in the office. Um, the Corporate Challenge, so this happens once a year in June, and it helps your team give back to the community through a fundraiser, which supports a charity through a day of fun team events and team pledging with over 50 companies in Windsor competing each year. The Silver Tea Golf and Virtual Gaming Center is another great way um, to have some fun with your employees, so you can hit a few rounds of mini golf, play some of their virtual games, and share some food while you're at it. Pick your plate. There's a lot of great um, places to pick food in Windsor, Essex. So you could get out there, you know, pick some apples, some strawberries, and if your team's feeling really ambitious, follow up with some seasonal baking using your fresh picked ingredients. The Twisted Apron is a great location to do some team building that's located in Windsor, and you can get your team together for a few hours to cook up a custom designed multiple course meal, or you can compete to cook the best meals with everyday items. So everyone wins through this because you get to eat. You can organize a food adventure. This is something that we did at Workforce Windsor Essex um, in the summer in August, and we all piled into some cars and went around Windsor and Essex County, stopping at some restaurants and had a great time bonding as a team doing that. Point Peely, which we all know about, is a great way to get outside with your team. Um, you can rent some bikes or you can do a guided canoe trip um, and get your team out there for some fresh air. Urban Surf Co. is another great opportunity. Um, you can paddle into Lake St. Clair and you can do that on a paddleboard or a kayak or a canoe. And again, a great activity to get your team outside in the summer into that fresh air. So a great local best practice that we have is from Brave Control, Brave Control Solutions, which rented out a movie theater for employees and their families to watch the latest Star Wars movie for free on opening night. This is a great example of a local team building activity. So this actually brings us to the end of our webinar on our small business recruitment and retention guide. You should receive a survey prompt once we have ended the broadcast. This is a short three question survey that we would like you to complete so that we have information that can help us improve our future webinars. Also, please do not hesitate to contact us to find out more about our additional community resources, such as our job fair guide for employers, experiential learning guide for employers, we search tool and we skills and we jobs. Don't forget that there are four handouts still available for download, including the PowerPoint presentation that you have seen before. My, my, mine and Katie's contact information is located on the last slide of this presentation. If you have any specific questions for us, 
And we also have a partnership with the Small Business Center at the University of Windsor, and they offer the Entrepreneur's Guide to Hiring Employees and Other Services, services and Information. We can put you in contact with one of our many partners in employment services, which offer services to aid in the recruitment of employees, or put you in touch with the Canada Business Network and their helpful search program. Again, this brings us to the end of our What Works Find and Keep Great Employees webinar. Our next webinar is What Works Teaching Tomorrow's Workforce and will take place from 3 o'clock to 4 p.m. tomorrow. This webinar is targeted at educators. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for attending.